for some of the standard reports about demographics like age and gender and location, um, we made some significant performance. It, this was a very slow analysis two weeks ago. We made it a lot faster. Um, so, but anyway, can, can you go to help? I want to see what the data is of your WhoNet. Go to help. Uh, so, help. Uh, you, you want to see the data from no, WhoNet? No, 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 stop. On the screen, it says help at the top menu. Help. Help, okay. About? About. Yes, I just want to see what the date is. So this is from April 22nd. Okay, good. We've made some improvements. Uh, you know, everything works the same, but we made it go a lot faster recently. Uh, can you click on OK? OK. Click on OK to close the screen. Yeah. Go to data analysis. No, data analysis, data quick analysis. analysis, quick analysis, the second option. Just want to see what options we have here. I think that I sent you some report macro files. I can resend those. Um, let's see. I'm going to go to, um, good. well, why don't we start by this? C click on exit. I'd like, because of the performance improvements, I'd like to put in the new software. So click on, no, not edit, exit. Perfect. Close that and exit. Leave WhoNet completely. Okay. I want to update your WhoNet. So let's go to the WhoNet website. From Google or? I'm sorry, what is that? So I'm going to search the Google, I mean, the WhoNet website or I don't know. You just go to whonet.org. There's no need to search. Just go to whonet.org. Go down a little bit. Down a little more. Okay, stop right there. Okay, you see the online installer? No, too far. Go back towards the top. We simply want to update the software further up this one further up further up stop stop you see it says download no yeah yes okay you see it good do the online installer the online installer is faster it's a smaller file so click on that mm -hmm. Yeah, it's downloading. Great. Now, now that we're doing that, I'm going to just send you an email right now. Um, is it Lalum? And I'm going to put in some macro files. Go to C drive Hunet uh, macros. And yeah, I'm going to zip those. Send to zip. I think that should do it. Good. So I'll now email that file to you. Zip. Okay. And uh, macro that report files. And I will um, please save these to the macros folder. And sent. Okay, great. I'm now going back to look at your computer. Has it finished downloading yet? It's still, uh, no, it's still downloading. Okay. Uh, good. I can't see the size. So is it halfway done or less than half? Okay, great. So you received my email. Okay, so. Yes. Good. Yes. Yeah, copy and paste that into your macros folder. Uh, so the way how to do it, uh, I'm going to copy all the items within the folder. Yeah, that should, well, okay, no, no. Okay, let's do it a different way. Close this right now, close this. Okay. Go back to your downloads folder. Yeah, this one. 
this is a document. Good, good, perfect, perfect. Cut and paste yeah. that. Cut and paste that into your Hunet macros folder. So cut. Okay, go yeah. to the go to my computer or you know go to the Windows Explorer, and go to the C drive. Yeah, Hunet. macro. What? And macros, correct. Okay, now paste. Paste. Yes. Now right click. And, and extract here. here. Here, extract here. Yeah. And then I want to, so this is also part of the teaching. So basically, uh, let's start off at the top. Uh, this is a series of macros, and we discussed those briefly uh, previously. You see that it says, can you make the, the I want to see the name. The name is incomplete. Can you make the name column a little bit wider? Just so we can see the full names of the file. Great, perfect. So as you can see here, these macros have different purposes. Percent susceptible gram negative, percent susceptible gram positive, isolate alerts for quality, isolate alerts for important species and resistance, percent resistance for Staph aureus. And we have, especially, you see all, there's several called isolate listing summary. I think the list, that, no, I think it's just better as a list. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, um, good. So you see several of them are called isolate listing summary. Those analyses were very slow. They are now very fast. So you have, um, we can't see the full net. Can you just change it back to a normal list? Uh, okay. Yeah, view list, because then we can see the full name. Okay, so you see it's organism by location, organism by sex. Um, no, that's details. Um, so you at the top of the screen, click on view. The top menu, click on view. View. View at the top of the menu, yes. And click on uh, um, just, uh, just titles, or list, list, choose list. One. Good, perfect, perfect. The list is good. So here you can see the full names. You see organism by age group, organism by lab, organism by location type, organism by month, organism by sex. So it's all of these different ways of summarizing the data. Good. Um, and I sent those to you as a big zip file, and that's called macros and reports, and you unzipped it here. So this is useful that if you've made some nice macros at the national level, you can easily share these with the people in the country. You just send them the macros, you send them the reports, they put them into the macros folder, and then they are ready to utilize. So each of these macros end in the letters MCR, and each analysis does something specific. For example, uh, can you double click on the one, oh, it doesn't matter. You see the one called organism by month? Isolate listing summary, oh, okay. organism by month? Yeah, yes. this one. Just double click on that. Um, okay, more applications, more apps, and put Notepad. Just put Notepad is fine. Notepad. Okay. So you see, these macro files are very simple and very short. It says, please, this is the name of the macro. Use the laboratory test. It's the analysis is isolate listing summary, organism by specimen date by month all organisms so you can see that's just, the macro is just simply a summary of one of the hunet analyses normally you don't need to see this but i want to show it to you because it is very simple you know and sometimes it's just easier to edit these behind the screen behind the scenes so close this this is what a macro looks like okay and can i ask you, you one question sure go ahead yes yeah uh, uh, what is the language of this hunet i don't understand by the way uh can we start from the scratch because uh, i'm actually new for macros especially specific to hunet uh so uh, you are actually uh, telling us uh, you know uh, i don't know how can i explain for you no i already understand can you explain this one I think, I think your question is you want to understand the syntax like what to type here yeah exactly great and the answer is you don't need to know. <laughs> There's, uh, I, I mean, I'll tell you a little bit, but WhoNet made this automatically. 
Uh, that's a good thing to do. I'll, uh, I'll, okay, I'll show you in a few minutes. Has your Hunet downloaded yet? Yeah, it's finished. Yeah. Okay, so let's un let's uh, run it. Let's uh, let's uh, up let's update your Hunet. The main reason I'm updating your Hunet is because the new one is going to be a lot faster. Mm -hmm. But it requires internet access, right? Well, so it needs the internet access to download it, but you've already done that. Right. So just double click. Yeah, just click on the Hunet setup. Okay. Yes. Maybe wait me uh, one minute. Uh, still, yeah. Okay. So it's not finished yet. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, now it's finished. I see, I see. Thank you. Great. Now that it's done, let's go ahead and do that. Agree. And we, we've been making a lot of changes and improvements recently. Um, uh, we've spent a lot of time modernizing the structure and improving the speed. So it's going to be useful for you for once in a while, you know, regularly just, you know, you can ask us what new features there are, but just check the website and it'll tell you the date. And um, sometimes the new features are not useful, are not relevant for you. Sometimes they are. It's like faster for me to do it, but there are benefits to doing it. it the, well, this update has no bad impact on your existing files. Every, all of the things I gave to you are being updated. All of your stuff stays the way that it was. Click on continue, good. So let's close that. We, we can minimize or close this. We no longer need it. Okay, uh, let's close out of this. Let's close out of this. Okay, and go to restart Hunet. So it simply just updated the Hunet files. Okay. And we wait for it to start. Good. So let's choose your laboratory. One of the things I want to discuss on the call is the idea of a national configuration. So let's get to, let's do that later. So go to data analysis, and I want to just refresh people how to make a macro. Click on data analysis. No, no. Click on exit. Okay. Go to data analysis. Data analysis. Normal data analysis. Okay, and click on analysis type. And you know, we can just choose, for example, on the left, choose isolate listing and summary. Okay, for the columns, it says specimen date by month. Let's change that. So change columns. Now on the right side of the screen, columns. Specimen date, let's just change that, for example, to uh, you know, location. Perfect, yes, location, click on OK. At the bottom of the screen, click on OK. Click on organisms. And let's just put three organisms. So put SAU, ECO. What? ECO, Escherichia coli, ECO. Okay, E. coli. Okay. E. coli, yes. And KPN for Klebsiella pneumonia. All right. And OK. And click on data files. And let's just find, just choose one of your data files. Also, this reminds me that you have one lab called 01, a different lab called 001. We can also standardize that. Yeah, that's good, yeah. Click OK. Good, and let's, for something different, go to isolates. And let's put specimen type equals blood. Okay. Go down a little more. A little more. There it is. Specimen type. Good. You can click on define criteria or you can double click. It does the same thing. Click on blood is good. And click, and it says include or exclude. Well, include. Click on OK. Yeah. 
Good, click OK, click OK. And before talking about the macro, just to begin analysis, I just want to make sure that there's some data here. Yeah, normally, uh, blood was not our target, so you will see a few number of bloods. Then just, uh, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. I do, there are some data. You see at the top of the screen, there are 74 isolates. Yeah. And you see some of them on the left column, some are zero, 01, some are zero, zero, 001. We will standardize that so they're all the same. Okay, good. So, yeah, uh, you know, the reason, uh, yes. originally uh, the code was uh, zero, zero, 001. So yeah. later on, uh, uh, we just created a new laboratory with yes. zero, 001 only. So uh, while we are merging the two data, you'll see two kinds of laboratories. Yes, that's perfectly fine. It is a bit inconvenient, so I will also show you how we can change it so that all of them are zero one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. This is an Thank example. You. Click on click on continue. Click on continue. And here you can see um, uh, by look. Oh, oh, the location column is empty. So I, I didn't pick a good field. Click on continue. Yeah. Click on continue and go to uh, analysis type. Change the column to laboratory. It's the second column. It's the it's the very top laboratory. Yeah. The, yeah. Perfect. Click on OK. And click in analysis. So the listing uh, has not changed, but now click on continue. Yeah. And now you can see we have tabs convenient to have them as two separate to just be one. Okay. And, and as you can see, most of the data are, you know, we have 52 Klebsiella in 01, but we only have seven Klebsiella in 001. So the majority of your data has the 01 code. Uh, so that we'll talk about that when we get to data cleaning. Click on continue. Good. So the reason I did this is to show you the macros. So click on macros. Yes. Yeah. Good. And call this new macro. Just click on new. Okay. And we just give it a name. We can give it any name, but let's try something descriptive. Call it isolate listing and summary. Hyphen or dash. Okay. Uh, that's an underline, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Put uh, SAU, comma, ECO, comma, KPN for the three bacteria that we did. And then underscore. Yes. Underscore. You want yeah, like this? Yeah. And either BL or blood, you know, whatever you want. Okay. You just want to give a name that's descriptive. Click. That saves the macro name. Now it's saved, yeah. No, did you click? A, it should have. Okay. Oh, okay. It went by. There's a delay. So what it did is it. It's, you saved the name and then you say, great. So now you have this new file there that you made. I was listing in summary. And click on edit right now. Click on edit. So as you yeah. can see, Hunet made the syntax. So personally, you don't need not. You do not need to know the language. You don't need to know the syntax. Hunet does it automatically. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's good. But uh, you know, uh, sometimes Hunet is uh, cannot do everything. Uh, uh, so there are some tasks that can be done using only macros. Uh, hmm. Can you think of an example? <laughs> yeah, you, because last time, uh, you know, if you remember, I asked you uh the or condition and also the end condition in that case 
you cannot do that kind of tasks using the hunet by itself rather you are expected to write a macro like this kind of lamp okay so, uh the, the, no, 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 stop. The, the answer to that is sort of yes and sort of no. What we were discussing last time about the ands and the ors was not yeah. macro. That's not a macro feature. That was an alert feature. So we reviewed the, uh, the alerts. We did that using Excel. So using Excel allows you more flexibility with ands and ors. So that is a very useful feature with complicated and and ors, but that is not a macro feature. That's an alert. Okay. Does that make sense? So so if yeah, you want to if you want to complicate it ands and ors, you can do that, but that's not a macro feature. That's an alert feature. Okay. Okay. And then yeah, we would just you. edit the alert file. Okay. There is one thing here. There is one. There's only one example I can think of of something you can do in a macro manually. And I can show you that. Okay, can you click on edit at the bottom of the screen? Edit? Uh, no, edit. not edit. Okay. Edit. Okay. Good. So, so you do not need to know this syntax. Hunet does it automatically. But you can edit it easily. For example, after KPN, go up to KPN. Yeah. And type comma. Type comma, yeah. Uh, uh, space P A E. That's pseudomonas originosa. P A E. Oh, okay. Comma, comma. Space E C L. E C L. Okay. Okay. Go down to blood. Okay. okay. And yeah. blood, comma, U R, yeah. for urine. Yeah. Okay. Now click on save. So now what we have done is we we have Hunet made the macro for us, but you can manually edit it. So personally, myself, I never make a macro out of my memory. I just use Hunet to make the macro. After Hunet makes the macro, then I can do this to make small edits to it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Of course, if we were to, can you, and then of course, if you go to row one, you know, row one, so you see row one, it says KPN there. Uh, yeah, the, per, yeah, the after, macro name. Yes. So after the KPN, after the KPN, put comma, P A E comma E C L. We don't have to do this, but I just want to make sure the macro name corresponds with what the macro does. So after blood, yeah. you can you can put blood comma urine. So all that makes sense. Yeah. Click on save. Great. There's one other thing. So uh, there is one thing that we can do here. Uh, can you click after the false? You see where it says false? False, oh, yeah, this one. Hit enter. Okay. And hit enter. Type begin yeah. analysis. Begin space analysis. Perfect. ES or IS? IS. It's the same as the name on the button. Okay, hit enter. Okay. And type organism equals, or organisms equal. It does. It does not matter. You can type organism or organisms. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, equals. S M A. That's serratia marcescens. S M A. Serratia marcescens. Like this, or I don't know. No, M A, M like mother, S M A, okay. comma. Yeah. Comma. E F A. That's Enterococcus faecalis, comma. Comma. E M um, E F M. Enterococcus faecium. E F M. Yeah. Hit enter. Hit enter. Type again yeah. analysis again. analysis so this is very it's a little bit more advanced but it is also very useful uh analysis and then click on save good and exit good. so now what will happen is that we click on exit 
Click on Exit. Okay. And go to Data Analysis. Go to yeah. Quick Analysis. Uh, type new. Click on New Report. And just as an example, let's call this Weekly Report. Weekly Where Report. No, no. At the top of the screen, Report Name. Type Weekly Report. Okay, maybe I can search it, yeah. Yeah, that's right. You just type it right there. We're giving a name to, you've already given a name to your macro. Now we're giving a name to the report. And a report is simply a collection of macros. Type the word report, weekly report. Uh, okay, weekly report. Yes. Because we just want to give it a descriptive name that means something to people. Okay. okay. Now we want to yeah. find the report that you made. So you made that report called Isolate Listing and Summary. So double click on that. Okay. Or use the arrow key, it means the same thing. Uh, so we can put here many reports. We can put here five reports, 20 reports, 100 reports. This time we're just putting one report. One report is fine. Click on Save. Uh, I meant to say macro. This is one macro. Click on Save. So we're now saving the weekly report and save again. That saves the name of the file and click on exit at the bottom of the screen click on exit yeah okay uh, good so now we have here a new report it's called the weekly report you also see below the report all of those standard reports who net standard report i should alerts Punet Standard Report, Organism and Antibiotic Results. Those are the reports that I just sent to you by email. Can you go down a little bit further? I want to see the reports at the bottom. Go a little more, a little more. Yeah, good. Let's start with, yeah, you click on the one called Patient and Sample Statistics. Click on Edit. So this is what I just sent to you by email, and you can see that this report does six analyses. This report does laboratory by month, sex by lab, age by lab, location by lab, location type by lab, specimen type by lab. Make sense? Yeah. So basically, you did it today for the weekly report using one macro. I did it for you with a number of reports and a number of macros. So it just basically allows you to automate a lot of these analyses so that you don't have to do everything manually every single time. So click on exit. Uh, may I ask you one regarding yeah. macros? Yeah, uh, actually, I understand clearly uh, what you are discussing, so it's uh, it's good, so good. But uh, my concern, maybe, uh, do macros are case sensitive or not? For example, uh, not. if you are Excellent writing question. big in a Excellent question. No, they are not case sensitive. Okay. Yeah, and also, you know, I told you to I told you to put, um, you know, a capsula comma space p e comma space. It also doesn't need the spaces. I like the spaces because it looks nicer. But we try to make it small details do not matter. It can be upper or lower case. You can put extra spaces. So uh, if you find any problems, let us know. But these these are excellent questions. These are the same questions I would want to know. But no, it is not case sensitive. Okay. okay. Great. Let's start off with your weekly report. Click on the weekly report. Click on data files. Good. And we can choose the same file that we chose before, or we can choose a different file. Um, Oh, uh, let, me, let me use this one. Okay. Okay. Illa. No, I under, this is an important different issue for us to discuss. We're going to take a break now from macros. Click on OK. Click on OK. Um, yeah, just cancel at the bottom. Cancel. Oh, that's right. just click on cancel. Okay, it doesn't matter. Click on exit. Again, exit. Yes, exit. Okay. Click on data analysis. I just want to try one more thing. 
because we've had a lot of compatibility issues. It's important for us to discuss it, and this could be a good time to do it. Click on data analysis. Yeah. At the bottom, click on data files. Okay. Okay, and try to choose the file. Try to choose the same file we chose before. Okay. You, yeah, okay, so, it was, uh... so you can see there's some something happened. And so uh, so I'm going to so we're going to take a break from macros and reports. This is an important a very important compatibility issue. For the last 20 years, Hunet has been using a very simple old-fashioned data structure called DBase. And the problem is Microsoft, it's making it more and more difficult to use DBase files. So we're seeing a lot of laboratories starting to have exactly this issue that we just saw. It worked 10 minutes ago, but it's not working now. Um, so we're going to talk about an upgrade. Click on cancel or OK. We're going to leave the screen. Good. OK, go to uh, click on exit. OK, go to data entry. And click on Update Data Files to SQLite. I wasn't planning on covering this during this call, but since it came up, it's important. So click on Select Data Files. Choose all of your files. Yeah. OK, no, no. Uh, we can do them one at a time, or we can do all three at the same time. Um, all, three, all, all, all three of these are valid files, correct? Yeah, but they are the same, actually. One of the data is just encrypting the patient information. Okay. So the one I sent you, this one. Yes, yes. OK, great. Let's choose all three files. Yeah. Okay, let's choose all three files. But oh, say it's not a valid database, yeah. Oh, no, why is that? Because this is supposed to be this is supposed to be OK. You know, maybe it's not on the website yet. Uh, oh, maybe this can is, I make this one? What is can that? I make this one on? Um, okay, okay, uh, I thought this was, can you click on cancel? Okay, click on help. I'm oh, sorry, click on cancel again. Click on help. Click on about. Oh, this is from last week, that's why, I, I understand why. Click on okay. Okay, I'm going to show you my computer screen. Okay. Okay. I can do yeah. that screen. Okay. Uh, so, Mikael, if you can make me a presenter, share. Okay, let me leave my email. So, here you see I have this one called HUNET test. So, I have HUNET 2020 here, I have HUNET 2020 test here. The feature that I want to show you is in this new test version. There it is. Okay. EPHI, data entry, update data files to SQLite. And I'm going to select the data file and I'm going to all files. So, where are your data? Um, I. Oh, I know they're not in they're not in the Hunet test folder. They are in the normal Hunet folder. Hunet data, and here here are your data. Okay, so you can see on my computer it works fine. Okay, I say okay. Good. So here you see that the original file is on the left. The new file we're putting onto the right. Begin conversion. It's been completed. And now when I go to my folder, here you see it says NRL one year encrypted zero one SQL light. So I'm going to send this file to you uh, or we could update your Hunet either way would be fine. Let's update your Hunet, but not quite yet, just because that's going to take a little bit to do. I'm going to say OK and Zalalam and attach. And here, and if I go to Hunet data, start a star zero one star, and there's the SQL light, and say OK, and uh, SQL light data, and click on send. Okay, can you check your email? 
Okay, so Miguel, I want to let's go back to uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Stop sharing my web. Oh, no, no my webcam, not that, but my screen. Um, good. So, so should I make the LLM um, presenter again? Yes, please make the LLM. Yeah, I did that. So Lalim, you should have received the request. Yes. So so we've been for the last three years, this issue of DBase incompatibility has been slowly increasing. And each time we come up with this temporary fix. And then from February to February, March, April, it took us three months where we replaced that we offer well, we didn't replace, but we're still there. So DBase is still there but we're having more and more compatibility issues. So we're going to start recommending people switch to SQLite to avoid the exact kind of compatibility issue that we just saw. Did you receive the file yet? Uh, yeah, maybe, no, not yet. Okay, check your inbox again. Oh, let, of course, let me make sure it left my outbox because sometimes it gets stuck. No, it did leave, so uh, yeah. it should be on its way. Has it arrived? I'm not looking at your screen right now. Oh. Okay. Now we can continue. Yes. Did you save it to your Hunet folder? Yeah. Yeah, I can find it from my desktop. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, great. Um, good. Uh, let me go back to your screen. There it is. Great. Go to data analysis, normal data analysis, and go to data files. I just want to make sure that it works. So go to your desktop. And change this to all files, you know, at the top, just change it to all files. What was the name of the file? Same thing, NRL. At the beginning of the name is the same. It simply ends in SQLite. It's number four. It's the, the number go down four. a few more. The one that's a SQLite. Good. Yeah. Click on OK. Good. That, that's fine. Good. That's fine. Click on exit. I just wanted to make sure that it worked. Good. So basically, if you're if you're if you do not if Hunet has no trouble with your DBase files, there is no need to go to SQLite. But we saw today there was a problem, so that's why we went to SQLite. So in the next six months, we're going to encourage people to start moving to SQLite because it's more compatible, it's faster, it's more modern, it has a lot more features for security, like we can do passwords and things. So over the next six months, I'm going to be writing to countries to recommend they switch over to SQLite. Anyway, we can discuss. That's not the purpose of this call, but it came up. Let's go to data analysis. Okay, but what was the reason uh, behind? What, what is that? What was the reason? Uh, you know, uh, what was the reason uh, having uh, not a compatible uh, data? Well, okay. Um, I already know the answer to this question. Have you in your life ever seen the software DBase? Uh, actually, uh, I'm not actually using the DBase. Uh, yes, I already you know, know that. I already, I already knew that because DBA, the heyday of the, the high point of DBase was the 1980s. It still existed in the 1990s. It still existed, but it went out of fashion very quickly because it was replaced by Access and Oracle and MySQL and all these other things. Yeah. So in 1994, I, for the Hunet data structure, I wanted to use Microsoft Access. But in 1994, Access was too new and had too many compatibility issues. I, at, at that time, it was Access number Access 2. So Access 2, I wanted to use as the Hunet data structure, but it was too unreliable. So the next best thing was DBase, because DBase was widely used at the time. It was on its way out, but it, you know, it still existed. And it was compatible and it was simple. So I made the decision to use DBase in 1994. And even in 1994, it was on its way out. In February of this year, in the last few years, uh, DBase is not a Microsoft product. So in the last few years, DBase, Windows is making DBase files more and more difficult to use. 
and then it, we used the technology called IS, no, what, we, we used the technology in Hunet called DAO, stands for Data Access Technology. It was later replaced yeah. by ADO, it was later replaced by ADO.net. So in, of this year, Microsoft, quote unquote, temporarily removed support for DAO. But temporarily, they didn't say so. So in February, we said we have to get rid, we have to move on from DBase to something more modern. So that's the answer to your question is that we've been trying to keep DBase going year in and year out, year after year, and it's just becoming more and more difficult. DBase continues to work very well for the large majority of Hunet users, but more and more people are having the exact issue that you are having now not a valid file, and it is a valid file. But Huna does not realize that because the DAO stuff. So that's why. Okay. okay, thank you. Now we're going to go back to our previous discussion of the macros and reports. So go to quick analysis and go to weekly report and files. And now we're going to choose the SQL light file that's on your desktop. Good. Okay, and click on OK. And good. So you can you chose the data from zero one, but you can choose the data from zero two, zero three, zero four. This report is not specific for zero one. We made it with zero one, but you can apply to any laboratory or any groups of laboratories. We could choose all of the data from all of Ethiopia. So that's one of the nice things about the data files here is that whatever you choose here will be used for the analysis. Click on Begin Analysis. And what you are going to see is first the Staph aureus, the E. coli, and the, you see those five pathogens listed at the top. Yeah. Okay, click on Continue. That's the list. This is the summary. Click on continue again, and now you should see the other pathogens. You know, you see the Serotium arcescens, the Enterococcus faecalis, and that's because we did begin analysis. So you, you remember how we did that? We had a first group of organisms, begin analysis. Yeah. We had a second yeah. group of organisms, begin analysis. So that so you can use the same macro to do many, many, many different species or specimens or other things simply by manually editing the macro. So can continue. So that means yes, question. Question. Yes. So we can do a lot of macros within uh, a single, uh, I don't know how can I can explain. Uh, you know, you, you were doing uh, two macros on the same page, right? Well, sort of. What were you, what were you doing? are two analyses using the yeah. same macro. It's the same macro, but that macro has multiple components. Okay. So it's the multiple, so all we did, it's basically exactly the same analysis, except we changed the organism. So if the macro is very, very similar, that's what I do, begin analysis, make changes, begin analysis, make changes. So if it's different variations, like different organisms, different specimens, I do it inside of the same macro. On the other hand, if the macros are completely different, I just make a different macro. Okay. Okay? Yeah. That, 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 what you typed in begin analysis, that is the only undocumented feature. So begin analysis, you type that manually. That is not available automatically. You do have to type it manually. So I, that's why I showed you how to do that manually. Click on continue. Maybe if we left blank uh, without using begin analysis, uh, what will happen? Well, then it'll just it, it just runs to the end. So it, that ha so normally Hunet does not say begin analysis. So if it does not say begin analysis, Hunet begins the analysis once it gets to the end of the macro. Okay. Yeah. So that's why the macro that I, the macro that we first made did, does not say begin analysis at the end because there's no need. It automatically begins the analysis once it gets to the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Click on continue. And so that's simply the same exact analysis, but with the second group of organisms. Click on continue. 
Good. Now I want th that's the new report we made together. Now I want to show you some of these other reports, which are going to be valuable for data cleaning and epidemiology. So everything till now has sort of been teaching, but now we're it's still teaching, but we're doing this for real. So now we can focus more to interpretation of your data. So go down three more. I want I don't want to do the alerts. We're going to do all of them, but let's start in a in a nice rational sequence. Go down a little more. A little more. Good. Patient sample statistics is a good place to start. Just as a reminder, you don't have to do this, but just as a reminder, click on edit. And what this is going to do is it's going to run six analysis, laboratory by month, lab, age by lab, location, location by, by lab. Okay. Click on exit. Yeah. And you can add, delete, you can change those however you want. Okay. Now, we're, the first time we do this, we click on begin analysis. So it's going to do six analyses. This is analysis number one. So let's see, as you can see, it's two different quote unquote laboratories. You have laboratory 001 and you have laboratory 01. Yeah. What's interesting is that you used hospital 001 in February, March, and April, and then it made a comeback in August and September. Yeah. Somebody must have just chose the wrong configuration file. Okay. So yeah, I, I actually we are using we are using two computers, desktop and my laptop. So uh, the configuration in my laptop is zero one. It is exactly the same as uh, the other sites. Uh, but the old desktop, uh, the code was zero zero one. So yes. two configurations in Perfect. two different right. computers. So on the, the purpose of this call, the purpose of this call is not to clean your data. The purpose of this call is to find issues. Yeah. On, a set, on the next call, then we can talk about how to clean these things up. So what, what I would like configuration to be the same on the two computers. I want all of these to say zero, 01. So right now we are finding issues. On the next call, we will talk about fixing issues. OK. OK. So it's basically cleaning in two parts. Part of cleaning is finding the issues. The other part of cleaning is fixing the issues. So, okay, so that's a that's a cleaning issue. Let's see, what else do we have? We have that, um, you know, from the first row, we have 477 isolates from 416 people. To do that, HUNET is using either the patient's medical record number or the patient's name. So there are repeats, but they're not a lot of repeats. And, I, and okay, so I can see the graph for hospital 001. Now click on the graph for hospital 01. Uh, of course, I'm not hospital, but laboratory. Click on the second graph, 01. So now you can see this is laboratory zero. Not a lot for March, because that was mostly 001. You use the other computer. And none for September, because you use the other computer. Now let's click on the month of January. Let's click on the graph for January. Down at the lower right-hand corner. So you can see the distribution. In January, it's all 01. Click on February. And good, so that you know, it's a combination, zero, zero, one. So, so this this lab this analysis is called laboratory in the rows, months in the columns. Now, click on continue. Okay. And here you see we have sex in the rows and the labs in the columns. So, uh, you know, for example, it's forty five percent female, fifty five percent male. Uh, here you have two labs, except these two labs are exactly the same lab. Uh, but if you put in laboratory 02, 03, 04, you can put all of the laboratories into this analysis. Okay. And then you can see in the columns on the left, number of isolates, number of patients, the national distribution of male and female. But you can also see the distribution male and female separately for each of the laboratories. Okay. So this is sex yeah. by lab. Now click on continue. I think this one is age. So here you see the age distribution. For example, at the lower right-hand corner, click on 01. Let's click on the graph for 01. 
uh, yeah, I see it all down, down at the bottom in the columns. No, no, the, the yeah. box called columns. You're in the wrong box. Columns zero um, one. Let's do the second one, which has more data. Good. So here you can see. I see that I have a formatting issue that we can fix later. <laughs> you, you see you have a nice distribution here. The, 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 the most common age group you have is age 25 to 34. Okay. You do see that yeah. the age group less than one is also a very big group. In fact, it's the biggest group. Um, logically, it should be on the left side of the screen, uh, but I didn't realize that. So the, 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 the babies are on the right side of the screen. I need that to move that back to the left side of the screen so it makes more logical sense. Uh, you, you, let me just make a copy of that. Let me discuss it. I'm going to make a copy and I'll discuss it with the programmer later. So I'm going to Word and I'm going to uh, Word. Okay, great. I'll discuss that with him later. Okay. Um, okay, so you see the value of this kind of demographic view. And you do, and you do have a lot of babies. Is that correct? Yeah, that's true, yeah. Because basically, one of the reasons we're doing this is for epidemiology. That's a good second reason. The first reason is is quality control. Does this make sense to you? If it doesn't make sense to you, there's probably a mistake. If you look at one of these graphs and say, that doesn't that doesn't seem right, you just see why you think it's not right, OK? Yeah, that's one. Yes? If uh, age information is me, uh, who needs or treat information? Well, you see on the right hand side it says unknown. Uh, where is it? The, la the on the graph, the last graph item it says the one uh, go down to the graph, it uh, says unknown. Yeah, it's unknown. But, yeah, that's missing or yeah, it's missing. It means we don't know what the age is. Uh, missing means unknown. Go to the okay. bottom of the table, drag down to the bottom of the table. I want to go to the bottom of the table. No, that's the bottom of the table. The table. Yeah, yeah it's the bottom. The last row. Go to the last row of the table. Sorry? Go to the last row of the table. The last, okay. So there yeah, you see. This one. You know, uh, yeah, unknown missing, it means the same thing. I am very pleased. You have very complete data. Out of how many do we have? We have about 1,800 records. And out of 1,800, 42 of them, the age is missing. Sometimes the age is missing because we have the patient's ages. Sometimes the age is missing because it's not a human specimen. It might be quality control. It might come from a sink. It might come from a water sample. It might come from food. So, um, you know, so if it's from a person, we would like to know the age. If it's a quality control stream, we don't need to know the age. So I'm very pleased here that your data are, your, your, the, here the age is very complete. Okay, maybe, uh, yes? maybe age uh, and new unit, uh, for example, one new unit, his age is, let's say, three days. So we we were entering this kind of data 3D to that's indicate fine. the date. That's not a trouble. That's not a problem. Hunet would automatically Hunet. That's what we want you to do. Hunet would include those in the people less than one. Okay. So, the, so the Hunet can would understand that. Either, one. They would be included under less than one. Also, you might wonder why we have the same straight. I don't like these age groups: five to 14, 15 to 24. I don't like these age groups. I would prefer 10 to 19, 20 to 29. We have these age groups because these are the age groups that WHO asked for. These are the official WHO age groups. I don't like them, but that's why you see these age groups. Okay, good. Now let's click on continue. There was analysis number three. This analysis number four, it's either location. So the lo So you are not entering a location. I think you are entering a department, but not a location. So you are leaving the location column empty, which is okay. Yeah. And that's simply what, that's the interpretation of this. Uh, so this is not interesting because you're not using this particular field. Click on continue. And this is location type. So you can see most of yours, the number one category is ICU. Well, I'm sorry, the number one category is the first row. The location type is missing. Yeah. 
So what's the difference between unknown and the, the first the first and the last? Uh, the last one means somebody typed it in. Somebody typed in U N K. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Yahoonet has one of the location types is unknown. So that's what the person typed, unknown. The first one means it's empty. Mm -hmm. Click on continue. So this is a comment. This is not about this is not about data cleaning or this is about going back to the laboratory and say, thank you. In January, you were 70% complete. Let's try to do a better job in February. Let's try to do a better job in March so that we can look at the completeness improvement over time. Okay, this is now the distribution by specimen type. So you see where it's you see the heading that says number of isolates. Click on the heading once. Number of isolates. Click on the heading. Click on the heading once. And click uh, on you it. Mean... You did it exactly correct. Click on the, so what that does, it sorts it. So the most common one is at the top of the list. So the most common thing that you have is blood, followed by urine, followed by pus. Okay. For example, at the bottom in the lower right hand corner of the graphs, click on zero one. I want to see the graphs for zero one. So I can see the most common is blood, followed by urine, followed by pus. It's exactly the same data there in the table, of course. I'm very pleased yeah. because there are no missing data. There's nothing unknown. You have always entered a specimen type. Okay. Any yeah, questions? actually, that is a must. <laughs> Great. Click on continue. And that was the last one. So does that make sense how easy, how nice it is? This is very valuable if you're looking for data completeness, you're looking for epidemiology, you're looking for comparison between 10 different hospitals. So this macro serves a number of purposes. Okay. John, I have a question. This is Fern. Yes. Can uh, can uh, does HUNET allow a country to program age specific, um, you know, age groups, uh, country specific age groups, rather than using the WHO standard age groups? That is definitely on our list of things that we want to do. And in, in short, no, HUNET cannot do that, but it is planned. Okay. Um, yeah, because I, uh, especially, I, well, for one, I just groups. I, I, I think it's prettier, you know, like 10 to 20, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, or it would be nice to do like zero to 18, 19 to 64, 65 up, uh, or people who work in pediatrics, people who work in pediatrics often want to do less than one, one to four, five. To, so there are different reasons why different people would want different age groups. It's definitely something we want to do. We have spent so much time in the last few years on HUNET on modernizing the data issues, replacing everything. I'm very happy to see now completed all aspects of the modernization. Now going forward, we start working on new features, improved performance. So, uh, so this is going to be a good time for us to start thinking about things like configurable age groups. Uh, yes, but I guess we can still export the isolates and uh, make our own age groups in another software like Excel or some statistical okay, well, analysis do, software. Okay. That's it. So good. So let's see. And it's we have an hour left, so we still have plenty of time. You can do things like that with Hunet. Uh, can you click on exit right now? Okay, go to data analysis. Data analysis. Okay, and go to analysis type. And let's call this isolate listing and summary. I do not want the list. I just want the summary. So on the left side of the screen, click on summary. On the left side of the screen. Now that's the right side of the screen. The left side of the screen, click on summary. It's already selected, yeah. Well, both were selected. I, I don't. And you did it perfectly. I wanted number two summary. I don't want number three both because I don't want to see the list. The list is too long. The list is not interesting to me right now. Okay, and okay. good and good. Let's click on OK. Click OK. And click on organisms. Type all and hit enter. Good. Click OK. Click on data fields and select the SQLite file. Uh, 
Okay, no, you have to, at the top of the screen, change it to all files. Otherwise, you're going to have this unfortunate message. So, okay, so uh, starting... Uh, never mind. Instead of, okay, go, go, instead of all files, go back to all files, the drop-down box. No, 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 stop that. At the top of the screen, you see where it says all files. Yeah. Change it to SQLite. That's just going to be more convenient. Now, it's only showing you the SQLite file. Okay, good. Select that. Click OK. And what else? Okay, good. Now go to isolates. Go to age. Yeah, define criteria or double click. It means the same thing. And for example, here type zero to 18. Greater than or equal to zero. 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 And then the and then 18. I, I don't, I don't, I'm just making these up, but you know, in the United States, that's what our range for pediatrics. Uh, in other countries, it's more like, a lot of countries they use 15 instead. But you know, I'll just go by the United States standards. So put 19, uh, put 18 there. 18. One eight, okay. One eight, yes. Click OK. Okay, good. Click OK. And let's just see what this looks like. Click on Begin Analysis. And so, so here what you see are the organisms in the patients age zero to eighteen. Okay. Click on Continue. Click on macros. Uh, new macro. Let's call this, I don't know, organism summary. Hyphen, yeah, organism summary. Hyphen or underscore. No, 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 no. Um, that's okay, but I meant afterwards. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Underscore uh, age, uh, ages zero to eighteen. Okay, good. And two is misspelled. Well, I mean, I, I think that's an. I don't know if that's an O word. Okay, good. Click on save. Click on save. The first is saving the macro name. The second is saving the file name. I, I want to show you a different way to edit this now. Um, click on exit. Exit. No, no, not edit. Click on exit. Exit. Click on exit. Click on exit. The whole of the Hunet. We're leaving, We're leaving Hunet right now. Okay. Or minimize it, I don't really care. Okay. I want to see the file folder. So can you now go to my computer, Hunet macros folder? So this is the new part of the lesson. Go to Hunet macros, uh, Hunet macros. Okay. So you see that macro that you just made called organism summary? Ages zero to 18? Yeah, this one. Yes. So copy that file twice. So copy and paste twice. OK. Good. Now make the column wider so I can see the full name. Good, perfect. OK. Uh, no, uh, you you pasted it once. I want you to paste it again. Yeah, the first one was this one, and the second one is this one. I want a third one. I want three copies of it. Okay. Okay, Copy great. Two. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the file names. So go to one of your copies, rename. And let's put let's change it to 19 to 64. I'm just going by United Standard United States, you know, ranges. 19 to 64. So these are basically non-elderly results, uh, adults. 
Okay, and you have an extra space after the four. Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, rename this one to, um, you know, we can say greater than 60. Um, you know, you can type the words greater than 60 or whatever, greater than or equal to 65, or you, you can say greater than 64. Just put a greater than simple. Oh, actually, you're not allowed greater to. Greater than. Type it's not the, allowed, actually. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, type type sixty type sixty five hyphen um a hundred or hyphen you know just put some big age. <laughs> like this. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, good. Okay, and uh, good, good. So we we changed the name of the macro, but we didn't change the macro itself. So double yeah. click on the first one. Double click on zero to eighteen. This one is correct. This one is correct. So you see isolate age equals zero to 18. So that one yeah. we don't have to change. We're just gonna leave that one the way it is. Okay. Close this By the one. way, I went to know this language. What's For example, that? I went to know this language. For example. No, I, no I already understand. I understand. I personally do not know the language. Uh, so what I do is I have Hunet making it the first time. So what I do is make it manually. And once you have it manually, then you can edit it. So, you know, if you do this enough, then you start to learn it. But we, I don't plan to document the language because Hunet does it for you. Uh, so, so the first time, make the macro manually. Once you made the macro manually, then edit it however you want. Okay. The reason yeah. for that is Hunet has so many options and so many features. We continue to change them. We continue to add more that you know it would ju it's just easier if you make it first using hunet and then manually edit it afterwards also you will see the language is pretty simple you know you'll learn very quickly simply by looking at these examples um yeah. uh okay let's let's um okay good let's close okay yeah just change this to 19 to 64. Okay, and the, you see the first row there, the macro name is 0 to 18? Yeah, I have so to let's, change that let's one. Change that. Let me change that. So as you can see, we have the file name and the macro name, so we change them separately. But it's not a problem, right? Not a problem. Yeah. File save, file exit. Okay, and then we do the same thing for the last one, the age 65. I, I would put maybe 120. I mean, you might have some people 101, 102. You know, just put something yeah. that you think is a reasonable upper limit. Maybe, can we do this one greater than something? I think, if I remember correctly, I think, I think you can just get rid of the one. I think if you put 65 hyphen, I think it will work. Get rid of the one that there. Is, I, yeah. think, I think this will work. Yeah, yeah. The upper age group in the U.S. is 124. The official uh, oh, is it? age group. I did not know that. Yeah. The oldest person ever to live with good documentation is Jeanne Camont. She was a French woman who died at 122 and maybe 10 months. So the oldest person ever with proper documentation lived to almost 123. So 124 makes sense. She was a very very funny woman. Um, she said, uh, what did she say? She said, oh, yes. So yeah, they told her, they, they asked her, um, um, you know, they, they asked her, oh, how are you doing? Oh, I am just here waiting, waiting for death and reporters. <laughs> and they said, oh, Madame Clement, you have such beautiful skin. Yes, I only have one wrinkle and I'm sitting on it. <laughs> so <laughs> 22, she was a comedian. Okay, good. So uh, let's save this. Yeah, it's saved already. Let's close this. Uh, good. So let's close out of this. And, um, you know, good. Uh, yeah, just restart Hunet. So go to, go to Open Laboratory, go to Data Entry. I, I told you to put 65 hyphen. I think that is correct, but I am not sure. So you asked me about learning the language. I'm gonna show you what I personally do. Go to data analysis, go to data analysis, go to yeah. isolate, 
Go to isolates. No, I did not want you to do that. Click on OK. Do not do this. Out. Click on OK. Leave data analysis. Leave data analysis. OK. Exit. Good. Go to data analysis. Data analysis. Go immediately to isolates. Isolates. This one. Now go to age. And you can just double click on it. It's faster than defined criteria. They mean the same thing. Yeah. Either's. Okay. And now just put 65 in the top box. Click on OK. No. Okay. Click OK. Mm. So who knows does 150? <laughs> click yeah. on OK. That is the maximum. Yes, click on OK. And click on macros. Click on new macro. New. Just type the word junk, junk test or whatever. Junk, J U N K. Yeah. Click on save. Click on save. Save. And now click on edit. So here you can see, so I just made a quick minimal, minimal macro because you asked me the syntax and the answer is I don't know the syntax. I just rely on Hunet to know the syntax. So I just make a little macro. Then what you can do is copy that row, copy that row right now, click on copy, uh, highlight the row. No, no, the last the row. No, no, no. Just the the only row I'm interested in. Just highlight the last row. Click on uh, okay. just to copy. Yeah. Good. You you copied it. Control C or something. Great. Yeah. Click, click on exit. Okay. Let's find the macro that you made. Uh, I forget if it's further up or further down. Organism, it's in alphabetical order. Go down further. There it is. So click on the 65 and above. Click on edit. Click on edit at the bottom of the screen. No, you have to click on edit first. It's at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Now highlight that row and paste. We're going to replace it with the good version of the row. Mm -hmm. So click on save. Yeah, so I'm hoping good. this gives you better comfort at editing. So I never create a macro from scratch because I don't I don't personally know the syntax myself. I use I use Huna to make the macro and then I manually edit it, you know, because editing it is very simple. I just don't personally remember all of these details from scratch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank good. You. Click on exit. Click on exit. Click on data analysis. Click on quick analysis. Let's go to that weekly report that you made. Click on edit. And right now your report has one macro in it. Go down to the bottom of the left. Go down to the bottom of the left. Good, and select all three of those organism ones. And you can select all three at the same time. Good. Yeah. Now select those. Click on save. Click on exit. Okay, now uh, choose your data file. At the top of the screen, change it to SQLite, or it's on the desktop. But, um, click OK. Macro, click on Begin Analysis.
Good. So this is the macro that we made about an hour ago. Click on continue. That's the listing. Okay. For five species. Summary. Continue. Now we have the listing for the other three species. Continue. That's exactly what we did an hour ago. Now click on continue. Now it's going to do the new macros that you just added. So here you have yeah. age categories 0 to 18. Click on continue. Zero, 19 to 64, continue. So Fern, in answer to your questions, no, Huna does not allow you to change the age groups. That's fixed. But in the way that I just showed you, you can make up your own macros and you create your own age groups. You have to do the age groups separately and then you can combine them later. Uh, okay, does that help? Yeah, it's a very nice example. Yes. So click on continue. Click on exit. Click on file. Click on settings. Oh, okay. Conf configuration. Oh. Configuration. It's close to the bottom. No, no. It's very close to the bottom. Configuration. Oh, where is it? It's close to the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Good. So here you can see you can configure the lo file locations. You click on font. All right. Change the fonts. Click on cluster alerts. This is for outbreak detection. That will be a subject for a future call. Click on cluster alerts. Cluster alerts. Okay. So we'll discuss this yeah. on a later call about outbreak detection. Click on caliper. Caliper is for measuring disk diffusion zone diameters. So we'll talk about these features later. Caliper, data protection. Yeah. So we have expanded yeah. HUNET's features for protecting, you know, about delete. So I've, you already saw the HUNET encryption feature, but we've expanded it. This is an expanded version of the encrypted feature. Okay, the reason I'm showing you this is later, you're going to see another sheet here for age, age groups. Okay, so this configuration yeah. area, we will continue to expand to allow more configurability, more customization, does that make sense? Yeah, but I have one additional question. Sure. Uh, is it possible to create a new variable on the base of the existing variable? No, it is not. Uh, maybe in the, well, if the answer to your question is, HUNET does not allow you to do that, but you can do that using Microsoft Access. So personally, like sometimes, you know, sometimes I do this a lot when I'm cleaning the data, one hospital says ciprofloxacin 5, the other hospital says ciprofloxacin 10. The ciprofloxacin 10 is a mistake, and I want to move it into the ciprofloxacin 5 column. So a lot of times, HUNET does not allow you to do that, but I do that personally myself using Microsoft Access. Okay. okay. That's, yeah, that's good, but you know the reason why I asked you this question? Yes, uh, no. Uh, you know, uh, HUNET, uh gives you uh, uh many variables that can be used for microbiology yes. but if i need additional variables i can create using hunet actually but some pupils can use excel uh for their data entry after the inter the data in excel they want to convert that excel to hunet yes so can we uh bring all the variables that are found in the excel into hunet is it possible yes is it possible all the variables all of the variables you yes need... you can okay um let's see uh the, okay so you do that in backlink uh so yeah, yeah. can you click on cancel here so the reason I showed you configuration is that in the future, you will start to see more and more options, including age group definition. Okay. Uh, we also want to put their definition of a patient. 
you know, is it the patient ID, is it the country and the lab ID, or is it the age and the name? So we're gonna, you're gonna start to see more options there for configuration. So can you click on File, Modify Laboratory? Uh, data fields. So you're familiar with this screen, yes? Yeah. So go to Modified List. Good. So you can add and create a lot of new data fields here. Backlink has exactly the same screen. So click on OK. Let's leave Hunet completely. So exit out of Hunet or minimize it. I don't care. Save changes. No, we didn't change anything. Okay, either minimize. Yeah, or, yeah that's fine. Now open up Backlink. Click on new format. Yeah. Okay, click on file structure. Uh, we have to answer one of the antibiotic questions. Click on antibiotics. Click on distiffusion. Click OK. We have to answer that antibiotic question before the next part, which is important. Uh, click on data fields. The bottom, oh. bottom of the screen, data fields. Yeah. Okay, click on modify the list of data fields. This is exactly the same screen that you see inside of Hunet. Click on modify list. Great. So, um, so this is the same as Hunet. So you asked me if they create a lot of files in Excel. Yeah. You know, with like diagnosis or county or anything like that. Uh, yes, you can change backlink to capture everything. Oh, okay. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, I don't want to capture everything. I want to capture the things that are interesting to me. You know, like they might have things I really don't care about, like phone number or something like that. So yes. Anything you want to capture, you can capture by doing this. Okay. Yeah. So okay. maybe the question asked by Fern, uh, we do have three age groups, right? Yes. So we can create a new variable using Excel uh, that contains three groups of age. Yes, that's then, very, very smart. That is a very that's a very clever idea. I showed you how to do that as three separate different analyses, but in yeah. Excel, if you created your own variable called age group, then you just call your variable. It's called EPHI or Ethiopia age group. So then Una yeah. would easily allow you to analyze your different age groups. So that would be a clever yeah. way to do it by editing it in Excel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay, uh, good. There's some other things to discuss in backlink, but that, we discussed backlink for Vitech last time. We can discuss Vitech for Polytech, Vitech for Excel another time. Or I forget, did we do, did we do, I think we did backlink for Vitech. I don't think we did backlink for Excel last time, did we? No, no. but okay. I don't uh, we did the same actually. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think we did. But uh, so your question is extremely appropriate for this backlink configurability option. Okay. Like, you know, as another example, you talked about creating a new column for the age group. And yes, backlink can then capture your column for age group. That would completely satisfy Fern's question, where you make the age group on your own in Excel before it gets to Hunet. Yeah. We'll allow you to do that inside of Hunet later. Okay. So that's one example. A different example is, you know, sometimes I've worked with hospitals in Excel. They have one column for the age and a different column for the age unit. It'll say in one column, it'll say five. In the next column, it'll say days, months, or years, meaning the age is on the age is in two different columns. At the present time, Backlink is not yet smart enough to combine those two columns together. I would like Backlink to have the flexibility to say that age is equal to age plus age unit. We do plan to do that in the future. It's not difficult to do, but we got a lot of different things we're trying to do. So right now, if a, if a hospital has a data file with the age,
age in one column and the age unit in another column. In Excel, I, I use a formula to combine the two age groups, to, to, to combine the two columns together. So if one column says five and the next column says D, then I have a new column that says 5D. So that's basically cleaning the Excel file a bit just so that it more closely matches the WhoNet and the Backlink logic. Okay, so let's continue. Let's go back to data analysis and quick analysis. Good, so we have seen the, the, the third standard report. Now let's click on the, let's click on the one that called SUNET standard report, organism and antibiotic results. So the last one, any questions on the last one? The last one is very, well, let's go, one more comment on the last one. Click on the last one, patient and sample statistics. Click on edit. So the one on the right, you see that I gave you a macro called location by laboratory. Can you click on it? Location by laboratory. Mm. On the right. The right. Okay. Location. Yes. So this macro is not useful for you because you are not entering the location. You are entering the department, I believe, if I remember correctly. Okay. So, yeah, so normally other sites, sorry, other sites, they have location. The only uh, site that cannot capture this location information is the national reference lab so other sites can use this uh, this macro right this brings up a different issue sometimes hospital one did it completely correctly hospital two did it completely correctly but they did it in a different way it's just less convenient because you know hospital one is one way hospital two is another way both of them are correct but it just makes it harder to combine the data so we could discuss that later as a potential issue so that we want all the hospitals to be as standardized as possible for the things that we care about. If there are things we don't care about, you know, if one has diagnosis and the other has the name of the doctor and the other has the urine colony count, that's not part of my national protocol. I don't care if that's standardized. But the things I do care about, I do want that to be standardized. Okay, great. So yes, it's important. So, so right now for EPHI, this one called location by laboratory is not useful for you because you do department. Uh, but for the other hospitals, it is useful. For, so for the other hospitals, I would leave this in. For EPHI, I would also add department by lab because right now I'm not getting information about department here. You can make your own macro. You can edit the one I gave you. I gave you one called location by lab. All you need to do is replace the word location by the word department and then you can use it for the EPHI data. So basically we're trying to help you as much as possible, but there is always room for additional customization and optimization. Okay, great. So my comment there was for location, it's not useful for you. Uh, department would be more useful for you, but location is useful for the other laboratories. Okay, click on exit. So we're now finished discussing this one called patient and sample statistics. Now let's do the one called organism and antibiotic results. So let's click on edit and let's see what this is going to give you. Good, so this one is all about organisms and antibiotic statistics. Um, so it's organism by lab, organism by date, organism by sex, organism by age group, organism location type, location specimen type. And after it does all of that, it will then do the percent resistant intermediate susceptible in detail for Staph aureus and E. coli. And then it will do the percent susceptible for the gram positives, followed by the percent susceptible for the gram negatives. Is that okay? That makes sense? Yeah. Great. So let's click on exit. We're not changing it. I just wanted to show you what this report does. Click on exit. Good. Good. Now let's click on data files. No, no, uh, no, uh, stay on that screen. Data analysis, quick analysis. Uh, organism and antibiotic results. Data files. Perfect. And now go find your SQLite file. It's on your desktop to SQLite. Yeah, perfect. Good. And click on OK and begin. 
We're saving all this to the screen, but of course we could also save it to an Excel file. Okay, so this is now organism by laboratory. And of course, you've got the two different versions of the lab. But if you had all 20 labs here, this would be valuable as a national picture. The columns called number of isolates, number of patients is the national picture. And then after that, you see the different laboratories individually. So uh, good, this is organism by lab. Now click on continue. And this is now organism by month, okay? As an example, in the lower right-hand corner, let's look for the graph for E. coli. It's in alphabetical order, so just go down to Escherichia coli. Good. Yeah. Here we can see the distribution month to month of E. coli. There are a lot of E. coli in November. Sometimes that means there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's an outbreak. Sometimes it means data entry is incomplete, or sometimes uh, EPGI is different because, you know, hospitals usually have a pretty steady amount of volume. Every month, a similar number of patients come in. A national reference lab, it might vary more because they're doing research projects and this and that and the other. So when you look at this, what you might see is that some months might be missing. You might see, um, you might see data from the year 2040. That would be a typing mistake. So I, first, before I think of epidemiology, I'm always thinking of quality issues. So here I have January to December for the year, whatever, 2018, that's perfect. Uh, if I see data from 2016, 2010, 1962, it usually means somebody made a typing mistake in data entry. So it's part of quality review. Uh, I'm a little surprised how few there are in October and how many there are in November. Um, uh but you know if it's if it's not surprising to you then there's no need to investigate it what you want to look at for things that don't make sense to you okay, okay. uh let's see let's go to staph aureus i start with the common ones because the common ones highlight you know some big issues like missing months Staph. good so you see there's a lot of staph aureus in the first half of the year and then it goes down and then it comes up again um, you know, if you have a reason, great. If you don't have, it's just seasonal. So I am, I am focusing mostly at this time. Does it make sense? Are there months missing? If it makes sense to you, then we're getting about epidemiology, and then that you take over because you are epidemiologists. Okay. okay. Let's click on the graph for January. So here we can see that the most common organism, quote unquote, is XXX, meaning no growth. Yeah, we did discuss a lot previously the value or lack of value of no growth. Yes, there is value to them, but it's also a lot of extra work. As you can see, the large majority of data entry here was for the no growth. And if laboratories have a small data volume, I think it's a reasonable request, a small data volume. If they have a laboratory information system, it's also easy to get the negatives usually. But if they have a large data volume or if they just don't have time, if they're so busy with COVID, I would be, from my perspective, it's okay to leave out the negatives because it's a lot of extra work and it gives a little extra value. There is value there, but it's also a lot of extra work. We had the discussion previously. Okay, so this analysis is organism by date. <laughs> Click on continue. And this is organism by male, female. So for example, um, well, it's good. Uh, yeah, click on, click on female, and there will probably be a lot of E. coli's in the graph. So yes, of course there's the XXX, is no growth. It's, the letter's a little hard to see. Is that E. coli? Yeah. Yeah, this is E. coli. And what is the other one? KP is, what's the one, is that, what is that? Um, that one, that one is uh, actually no growth because no pathogenic growth. Oh, I see. Uh, no, I, I see. I see. Uh, let's go to the column heading. You see where it says number of isolates? Click on the col column heading once. Uh, sorry. Go to the column heading in the table. Go to the table number of isolates. Click that once, and click it again. So yes, as you just pointed out, the majority are no growth and no pathogens found, Pathogen. yeah. which is almost the same thing, okay. followed by E. coli. So the number one pathogens 
in, in females are E. coli and Klebsiella. Let's check the male. Let's check the men. Click on M. Do the same thing. Let's uh, sort the database, number of isolates. Go back to the table. Oh, no, no, never mind. You see, okay, um, in the table, click on the letter F once and click on the letter F again. Good. And click again. So we can see that females are E. coli 47 Klebsiella's. So E. coli is by far the most common organism. Let's do the same thing for the men. So click on M once, the column heading once, and again. So for men, the most common pathogen is Staph aureus, whereas E. coli is number three. Yeah. So the men have a lot of, uh, the, woman, the, the men and women have a lot of the same diseases, of course, but the women have many more urine infections than the men do. So for the women, E. coli is the number one pathogen, but for men, E. coli is the number three pathogen. So that kind of makes sense. You always want to make sure that reality checked, that the data makes sense. Okay, good. Um, you know, for example, let's go to the row graph. Go to the row graph and look for Staph aureus. The graph area right at the bottom is. So you can see there are a lot more Staph aureus in men than in women. Now go up and do the similar graph for E. coli. And you can see women, there are more E. coli than in men. So these are a lot of the pathogens like Pseudomonas are probably pretty similar. If it's a hospital infection, well, that's enough of that. Click on continue. This one was organism by gender. And now we're seeing organism by, I don't know, by age group. Okay. Yeah, by age group, yeah. Of course, it's my age groups. But if you put your variable, if you put Ethiopia age groups, then the three columns are going to be your variable rather than my variable. So yes, if you do that with Excel, put it through backlink, you will be able to do this now with the age groups, the way that you would like to, to do them. Okay, great. Um, I am glad that the less than one category is on the left where it's supposed to be, that's good. Okay, uh, click on continue. This organism by, that was by age, this is by, what is this? By location type, emergency inpatient, outpatient. Uh, I don't, we're not going to go through all these right now. Uh, click on continue. Uh, and what, this is the location, but that's, the column is empty. So click on continue. It's not useful for you. If you would want department for that. Um, what is this? This one is specimen type. So I can see BL yeah. is blood. Um, okay. You know, for example, click on the column heading for blood. I want to sort this by blood. Sort by blood once, twice. Okay. So the most common pathogen is Staph aureus. Follows a surprise to me, Burkholderia cepatia. Do you have outbreaks? This is not a, a very common organism, but for you it is. It's the number two pathogen in blood. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I made a mistake. Number three. Number one is yeah, Klebsiella pneumonia. Yeah. Followed by staph, followed by Burkholderia. That's very common. Okay. Let's do the same for the urine. So, so let's sort it on urine. So urine column towards the right, the UR. Towards the right, UR. Click once, click again. So not a surprise. The number one pathogen is E. coli, followed by Klebsiella, followed by mixed. And Burkle dairy is nowhere to be seen. You know, it might be down further, but so you can see that it's quite different for some of these key pathogens. Okay. You also can see that the three most common specimen types you have are blood, pus, and urine. Yeah. Click on continue. I don't know what's coming next. Okay, now we're on the percent resistance for the Staph aureus. We're going in sequence through each of the macros. Now click on number tested at the bottom of the screen. I want to see the graph for number tested. I like to look at this because this te number tested, the last graph, yes. Good. This tells me what drugs you're testing, how often you test them. I'm starting at the left. Penicillin is correct. 
Oxygen and disc is not a correct test. So oxygen and disc is. Oxygen is okay. Tober is okay. Cipro is okay. Staph is okay. Zithromycin, erythromycin, linezolid. These are appropriate drugs. Um, let's see. Let me take a look at the oxygen. Yeah, so we discussed a lot about the oxycillin last time, that the sulfoxin is the disc you want. But, you know, so I, I won't go into the detail of the explanation because we've already had that. But what I'm looking for here are two things. Are they testing appropriate antibiotics? Are they testing the antibiotics in the national minimal protocol? And here you are. You're testing all the common things, the important things for Stephorus. Secondly, are they testing them systematically? So, ox, uh, so, uh, foxid, so, so foxidin, yes, but it's not even consistent. Like Cipro is a little bit less than SXT, a little bit less than clindamycin. It's nice if everything is perfect, if everything is equally tested. Then you have things like daptomycin and nitroferantoin and chloramphenicol and tobramycin that are infrequently tested. Tested in urine, tested as second line, testing in multi-resistant strains. So, for example, if you look at the okay, look at the table for tobramycin, you see the row for tobramycin. You see it says 100% susceptible. That sounds great, but there are only yeah. two results. Yeah, it's not meaningful. So, can you click on the number column once and click on it again? Click once, click on it again. Good. So these antibiotics at the top, I have confidence in. The antibiotics at the bottom, are they're just too little data. And I see that very visibly in the graph. So tobramycin, not enough data. Daptomycin, not enough data. Uh, I'm interested in the daptomycin. Let's go find the daptomycin. Go down to the bottom here. I expect it to be 100% sensitive. But it isn't. Oh, and it has the question mark. And the reason for that is a breakpoint. There are no breakpoints. Oh, it's because, okay, so there's another issue. I, I don't want to get into this now because we're running short on time. So so the main thing I'm looking for now, I'm not that interested right now in the percent resistances. Uh, the reason I put this is I want to see the test patterns. Do they test appropriate drugs and do they test them systematically? Let's do the same for E. coli. Click on continue. Okay, click on the number tested graph. First of all, on the far left, you see penicillin. That's an inappropriate drug. And you even see it in the table. You see there's penicillin one time. It might have been a typing mistake. It might, maybe they yeah. test. Either way, it's a mistake. It's either a laboratory mistake or a typing mistake. So ampicillin is good. PIP, PIP is good, but it's an old drug. Nobody really tests pipicillin. Piperacillin tazobactam is very important clinically. Piperacillin by itself, I don't, I don't, first of all, I want to make sure, okay, you do have piptazo, I do see piptazo. So in the, in the table, you see piptazo 76 times. Piptazo is an important drug. Piperacillin by itself really is not very important. AMC, TCP, CDO, CX. So I'm looking to see, are there drugs that are not, drugs that are incorrect, azithromycin, I'm not certain about this. I don't think azithromycin is appropriate for E. coli. I'm not certain of that. And also you can see it's a bit haphazard. Cipro and SXT and MEM are tested all of the time. You see the nice big peak, MEM, CIP, SXT. But AMP is less and TCP is less and Cefepime is less. So in the future, I'm hoping that we can pick a certain minimum standard that is tested consistently on every isolate. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, it's good for statistics, but it's also good for patient care. It's good if the doctors know they're gonna get the same core set throughout the country of the most common things that they should have. Of course, if the labs wanna do more testing, that's fine. Um, but they should at least do the minimum. Okay, now let's, uh, let, let's click on the graph for ampicillin. In the lower right-hand corner, click on ampicillin. So here we see the zone numbers. You see high level resistance on the left, sensitive on the right, and there are not a lot of sensitives. Let's go to the graph for piperacillin. This is a very good drug. So go to piperacillin tazobactam. So you see most of them are sensitive. You know, you see some high level resistance, some low level resistance. So that's enough of that. Click on continue. 
Okay, and now we're gonna do the antibiogram for some of the most important gram-positive pathogens. And Enterococ- I did not put all gram-positives, I just put some of the most important ones. Enterococcus faecalis, faecium species, and there were no streptomonia, because I also put streptomonia on the list. Uh, the the gram- gram-positive organisms are very different from each other. Staph is very different from Enterococcus. Enterococcus is very different from streptomonia. So let's have this discussion, but let's have it with the gram-negatives. Click on continue. So here the, here the gram negatives are very similar. E. coli, Klebsiella, they're all kind of similar organisms. So in the lower right-hand corner, click on the graph for ECO. Click on the graph for E. coli. Good, so I can see sensitive resistant. Click on the graph for Klebsiella pneumonia. Look on the graph for ABA. Acinetobacter is usually very resistant. So, well, it's not as resistant as I thought. It does depend on the country. Um, or click at the bottom on ampicillin, the graph for ampicillin. So, uh, well, let's use a more interesting example. Click on the graph for piperacillin tazobactam. Well, no, 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 it's fine. Uh, let's go back to the ampicillin. Uh, I said it's not interesting, but in fact, it's a little bit interesting. Okay, okay, stay right where you are. Let's finish the discussion of Piptazo. So here is Piptazo for E. coli is about almost 80% sensitive, but for ABA, it's about almost 40% sensitive. Haemophilus influenza, 0% sensitive. Uh, now let's go back to the ampicillin. So you can see that some of the E. coli are sensitive. Many of the homophilus are sensitive. Homophilus is about 50% sensitive, but all of the other ones are 0% sensitive, meaning they're resistant. And that's normal because these organisms are intrinsically resistant. Acinetobacter should be ampicillin resistant. Epsilla should be. So I, I said it was uninteresting because of the resistance, but it's also good from a quality perspective. I am glad to see that homophilus is relatively susceptible. Well, not it's half, it's not great. But homophilus is relatively susceptible, whereas the other organisms are completely resistant or mostly resistant. Now click on continue. Okay, so th- these two things I just sent you, the, the, the two re- re- reports we have just seen, the two reports we have just seen have no confidential data in them. There's no patient details. There's no patient names, no patient numbers. So if you wanna share data with other people, these don't these just only have statistics now we're going to continue with that other one called isod alerts so please click on isod alerts what is it i saw that that one i saw alerts i you you just I, had your mouse on it i said alert who net standard report i saw alerts okay <laughs> click on edit you can see this one does three macros. Important species, important resistance, that's important for epidemiology. Quality control or invalid data. Click on exit. Okay, choose your, well, it's already chosen SQLite. Now click on begin analysis. We're running short on time. Normally I'd show you how to export this to Excel, uh, but it's easy, you just choose Excel. Um, so this is a list of bacteria that have either an important species alert or an important resistance alert. Uh, at the top of the screen, you see there were 209 isolates. Move over to the right side of the screen slowly. I just wanna see after the antibiotics. A Little more to the right, more to the right. Uh, just a little bit after the antibiotics. Slow down, that spot, stop right there. Uh, actually, a little more to the right. A little more to the right. Good. Uh, you see those three columns called priority organisms and isolate alerts? No, too far. That's fine. Stop right there. Uh, you see the three columns called priority organisms and isolate alerts? Mm. Okay. The column called organisms, please make that column wider. and ice alerts. I wanted to make both of those columns wider. Make it even wider than that because some of these comments are quite long. 
a little more, make it wider. Uh, that's good. And yeah, that's good. Okay, good. Now let's make the organism column a little bit wider. I just need to see the name of the organism. Yeah, a little bit more than that. Good. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So here you can see. Um, you see. Let, let's click on the column that says priority. I want to sort this by priority. Click on priority once. No, no, you don't need to make it wider, but you know, uh, that's, I want to sort it. So make the, so click priority once. And we see our medium priority alert. Oh, we see our high priority. This is right, because H is in alphabetical order before medium. Click on priority again. I want to see the high priority alerts. And high is in alphabetical order higher. That's perfect. So here you see in the column called ice alerts, we have carbon pen and resistance. We have a lot of CRE. This is a high priority alert. We have possible ESPL. Most of your alerts are the same, carbon pen and resistance. Can you go down further? And I see vancomycin resistant. And I think we discussed this last time, and I think we discussed this in detail last time. Uh, and I think those are I think those are just a mistake. I think staff and two of them were resistant, but it's not real resistance. So we discussed those vancomycin resistant ones last time. Uh, possibly ESBL, I'm a case in. So do you get a sense of this? This is just to find for you interesting results. Okay. If you receive data on a monthly basis from laboratories, I would recommend that you be interested in the high priority alerts. I don't think the medium priority alerts are so interesting at the national level. Um, they're, they're, statistics are interesting. I do want to know the percent MRSA, but I don't want to see a list of all the MRSA. What you have here is the list. Okay. Can you go back to the far left? Go back, to, go back to the far left of the table. Obviously, the red is the actual the alert, so you can see where the problem is. Go far, far left, far left, all the way left. Good. So I want to emphasize here, you do see the confidential patient data here. So this is a very valuable report for people inside the network with approval. Do not send this to anybody else, especially if there are names and things there. So we're going to put that on the screen just to highlight that some of these things have patient details and some of them don't. So this analysis is very valuable for the lab and for the national coordinators, but it does have confidential data in it. You click on continue. So this one was about high priority resistance and high priority or important species and important resistance. This is a summary. So the most common rule you have is possible ESBL. You see, so any questions on this? I'm just looking at the time. It's just a summary of the alerts. And they're categorized. You see the checkbox, important species. Um, okay, good. Now let's click on continue. All of those were important species or important resistance. Now we're doing exactly the same thing, but these are now quality control alerts. Can you go over to the right again? I want to see what the alerts are. Good, and let's just make ISIL alerts column a little bit wider. We don't have to do all of them, just ISIL alerts, make that a little bit wider. Uh, not a little bit, make it a lot wider. Good, so here, just as an example, uh, you see it says, do you see the row that's, you see the one that says cephalosporin three equals susceptible? Enterobacter is usually resistant. So, so it's just it's just saying that. Well, you see the one that says aminoglycosides discordant. Do you see the row that says aminoglycosides discordant? Can you click on it? This one. No, aminoglycosides discordant up two. Up, yeah, that, that's one. That one's fine. That one's fine. Aminoglycosides discordant. You know, there's a drug genomycin which is old and cheap. There's a newer drug, amikacin. It's just much more expensive and much newer. Usually, an E. coli will be resistant to gentamicin, but sensitive to amikacin. If you have amikacin resistant, but gentamicin sensitive, it, it might be a mistake. And that's what this means. It means the results don't, don't make, the results seem wrong. Mm -hmm. Or in a similar way, if you have an MRSA that is sensitive to penicillin, that doesn't make any sense. 
So you can see the column called quality control, these are mistakes. It doesn't mean it's a mistake, but it means you should double check it. Click on continue. Some of these alerts are obvious mistakes. Some of these alerts are not necessarily a mistake, like Klebsiella can be sensitive to ampicillin. It's rare, but it, it just means if you have Klebsiella sensitive to ampicillin, you should just retest it because maybe it's not sensitive or maybe it's not a Klebsiella, maybe the identification is wrong. And here's a summary. So the most common rule is uh, rule number 16, yeah, rule number 16. Okay. Let's click on continue. I am going quickly because I'm looking at the clock. Click on continue. That's all. <clears throat> there were no invalid data because that was number three. <clears throat> but just one small point. Who net right now, like if the person had male and female and they accidentally typed the letter W as a mistake, Hunet is doing a little bit of validity checking. Oh no, I take that back. It's not even, no, I just take it back. It was, it's just not, that part's not ready yet. We're gonna make that better. Okay, the last thing, you see the one here at the top of the screen called standard report? Click on the one called standard report. Hunet has had exactly this feature for 20 years. I like it, but I don't like it. I like it, but it can be better. Click on begin analysis. This one we're going to discuss in greater detail on the next call, but I want to show you that everything we just did, uh, it's kind of summarized here. Section A, a little summary. Section, go to section B. Percent valid, percent incomplete. You see down at the bottom, it says the male and the female. It has the departments. Now click on organisms, go to tab C. It has, so basically, now click on D. Antibiotic results, click on E. Uh, I mean, uh, go to F, just click quickly, F, G, H, I. Uh, okay, now click on OK. Click on edit. So you can see here, this did a lot of the stuff we already saw today. The difference is that this is much older. The advantage is it's concise, it's easy. It's uh, it's not all the details. It's, it's tr We're trying to make a PDF file. So for the, for the stakeholders, that's easier to share. Excel files are great, but there's a ton. Of, whereas this is much shorter. Uh, what I don't like is that it's not configurable. So it's sort of a, uh, click on OK. Click on output to screen. My goal here is to add, and the word works, but it's not. What we want to do is make a very pretty, attractive report that you can share with the physicians, with the, you know, with the IDDS people, other colleagues. So, at you as the national data managers, you want all the details. But if you want to share this with somebody else, they don't want the same level of detail. They want pretty things and text, a nice cover page. So we're sort of moving in that direction. So we can discuss, I want, this is a little teaser, but I just wanted to show you where we are going with this. So basically the standard report is a short version of this phone call. <laughs> we covered a lot of reports in detail. The standard report is just sort of a summary of all of those things.